German tactical organization would see many changes during the Second World War. The most widespread wave of reform came in late 43 and early 44 with the intent of making the most out of Germany's reduced manpower. For the infantry battalion, the end result is shown here, the organization of May 1944, which would remain in use until the end of the war. Superficially, the German battalion followed a common template of its time. A headquarters, three rifle companies and a support company with heavy weapons. Taking a closer look reveals some major differences, however. First of all, there was no HQ company. Instead, logistics were mostly decentralized to the company level, meaning companies had to manage their own supply train. This so-called TOS was a common feature throughout the battalion's companies. The supply trains were completely horse-drawn, which brings us to another noteworthy feature, the lack of motorization. Almost all supplies and heavy weapons were horse-drawn. To save manpower, some work in these supply columns was done by conscripted prisoners of war from the Eastern Front, so-called Hebes. Finally, there were no dedicated anti-tank units in the battalion. Instead, anti-tank defense relied on single-use, hollow-charge weapons issued to the rifle companies. However, a platoon of 18 anti-tank rocket launchers was usually assigned to the battalion from the regiment's anti-tank company. Starting our detailed look at the top, we have the battalion headquarters. The command section was where the battalion commander could be found, as well as a small staff and messengers. Typically, the commander held a rank equivalent to major or lieutenant colonel. The communication section facilitated both wired and wireless links between battalion HQ and the companies. Completing the HQ was the battalion supply train, which housed specialized supporting personnel such as clerks and blacksmiths, and carried reserve supplies for the entire battalion. The frontline elements of the battalion were its three rifle companies, called a Schutzenkompanie. These consisted of an HQ, three rifle platoons, a heavy machine gun squad, and a supply train. The officer in charge was equivalent to a captain. Each of the three platoons, called a Zug, was made up of a platoon HQ and three squads. German platoons were often led by NCOs instead of officers. The platoon had its own small horse-drawn baggage train, but this stayed out of combat. The platoon's three squads, called a Gruppe, each consisted of nine men. A squad was led by an NCO and carried a light machine gun as their heaviest weapon. The heavy machine gun squad provided fire support for the company. It had two heavy machine guns, which were of the same type used by the squads, but mounted on a tripod and operated by a larger crew. Finally, each company had a large supply train, which included a field kitchen, multiple horse-drawn carts, and supporting personnel. The three rifle companies were supported by the heavy company, called the Schwere Compagnie. It had an HQ with communication personnel, a heavy machine gun platoon, medium mortar platoon, heavy mortar platoon, and supply train. The machine gun platoon was organized into three squads, which were very similar to the machine gun squads of the rifle companies. There were three of these squads in the platoon, every squad having two guns, for a total of six heavy machine guns in the platoon. The medium mortar platoon was organized in a similar manner. Three squads of two mortars, resulting in six mortars total. These were 80mm pieces, comparable to the mortars used by other armies at the battalion level. A very uncommon piece of equipment at the battalion level was the heavy 120mm mortar. Four of these were organized in the heavy mortar platoon. This platoon was also the only one in the battalion not reliant on horsepower. At least on paper, it used trucks and tractors to do its heavy lifting. Regarding medical services, there was one medical officer who ran the battalion aid station and a medical NCO for every company. Service personnel from the trains often acted as stretcher bearers in combat. Ending on mobility, the many horses of the battalion made motorization impossible, as they could not be loaded on trucks. Instead, the battalion was designed to march from a rail head to the front. The use of baggage trains down to platoon level made these long marches easier by keeping the load of the individual soldier light.